Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. I've got another sort of rainy day here, so if you can hear noise in the background, it's just the rain on the roof. Yucky. Okay, where am I taking you today? Well, I'm staying with King Henry VII's reign today. For on this day in Tudor history, Saturday the 24th of November 1487, the coronation procession of Elizabeth of York, Queen Consort of Henry VII, took place in London. Now, Henry VII, or Henry Tudor, as he'd originally been called, had become King Henry VII following the defeat of King Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field on the 22nd of August, 1485. And then he'd united the houses of Lancaster and York, who, of course, had been fighting each other in the, uh, in the Civil War known as the Wars of the Roses, by marrying Elizabeth of York, daughter of the late King Edward IV, and he married her on the 18th of January 1486. Elizabeth gave birth to their first child, a son, Arthur, in September 1486, and her coronation was postponed due to her pregnancy and then due to unrest in the country. Uh, things that I mentioned in yesterday's talk, the Cornish Rebellion and Perkin Warbeck as examples. But then her coronation was scheduled for the 25th of November 1487. On Friday, the 23rd of November, 1487, Elizabeth left Greenwich and traveled by water along the River Thames to the Tower of London. She was accompanied by her mother-in-law, Lady Margaret Beaufort, Countess of Richmond, and a procession of decorated barges containing peers and peeresses, the Lord Mayor, sheriffs, and aldermen. And one barge in particular stood out as it carried a red dragon which spouted fire. I mean, that must have been a marvelous sight to see on the River Thames that day. When she got to the Tower of London, she was welcomed by her husband, the King, and that night, 11 Knights of the Bath were created. Then, on this day in history, the 24th of November, 1487, she had her coronation procession processing through the streets of London from the Tower to Westminster. The memoir of Elizabeth of York by 19th century historian Nicholas Harris Nicholas, which appears in the Privy Purse Expenses of Elizabeth of York, which Nicholas edited, gives an account of this day drawn from primary sources. So I'm going to share that with you now because it's much better than me sort of making it up. On the next day after dinner, Her Majesty being royally apparelled in a kirtle of white cloth of gold damask and a mantle of the same suit furred with ermine, fastened before her breast with a great lace curiously wrought of gold and silk and rich knobs of gold at the end tasseled, her fair yellow hair hanging down plain behind her back with a call of pipes over it and wearing on her head a circle of gold richly garnished with precious stones, quitted her chamber of state. Her train was borne by her sister, the Lady Cecily, and being attended by a great retinue of lords, ladies and others, she enters her litter in which she was conveyed to Westminster. Most of the streets which were lined with the city companies in their liveries were hung with tapestry and arras, whilst in Cheapside and some other places, rich cloths of gold and velvets and silks were displayed. The houses were filled with spectators and the crowd is represented as being immense, all eager to see the queen in her royal apparel, a feeling which had perhaps a deeper source than the gratification of idle curiosity. Children in the dresses of angels and virgins were placed in various parts who sung the Queen's praises as she passed and preceded by the Duke of Bedford as Lord Steward, the Earl of Oxford as Great Chamberlain, the Earl of Derby as Constable and the Earl of Nottingham as Marshal of England, by the Duke of Suffolk, the Lord Mayor, Garter King of Arms, the Heralds and other official persons 
and by the newly made Knights of the Bath with their banners borne before them. Her Majesty proceeded through the city, sitting in a litter under a canopy borne by the Knights of the Body. Her sister Cecily, her aunt the Duchess of Bedford, the Duchesses of Norfolk and Suffolk, the Countess of Oxford in two chairs, and six Baronesses mounted on palfreys immediately followed the Queen. And in this order, the procession arrived at Westminster, where she slept. Now, Elizabeth, after this, needed to rest to prepare for the next day because the next day was going to be a big day for her, her coronation as Queen Consort of King Henry VII at Westminster Abbey. So that's what happened on this day in Tudor history. We have the coronation procession of Elizabeth of York through the streets of London. I do hope you've enjoyed today's talk. Thank you for joining me. You can click round about there to subscribe, uh, which is a perfect thing to do if you're interested in Tudor history with a mix of uh, cat and dog cameos as well. You can hit like uh, to like this uh, video if you've enjoyed it and you can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live as well. And I do appreciate all your comments. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.